What's up, guys? That really gross guy here. We are back for the big reveals of Tenokan. So I am really excited to be doing this video because this video contains some huge information about what is coming to Warframe. And uh, while I did a video about the, the two new Warframes that are coming to Warframe, or two new, oh yeah, oh no, we're making Warframes for uh, Destiny. No, I'm just kidding. Anyways, so uh, the two new Warframes, which you can see up in the top here, right hand corner, if you want to check that out, uh, those two are awesome. Those are really cool. And I guess those are kind of big reveals as well. Uh, we also got to see a ton of deluxe stuff. There's like five or six deluxe skins, which are coming our way, which all look freaking awesome so if you want to check those out you can also check that out in the top hand right hand corner uh just keep in mind all of this stuff will be in the outro so you could also just hang out watch this video with the big reveals and do that as well however i did a video leading up to this video which talks about some of the smaller information or the smaller stuff uh it does not contain information about the warframes or the deluxe skins but it does talk about a couple weapons that we will be uh, getting in the near future. It does also talk about the neck, a prime weapon that we know about, potentially a prime warframe uh, that will be coming our way. There is also some information about the modular weapons that uh, we will be seeing in the Venus open world. So you can check those out in the small reveals trailer as well. Um, we will be also touching base a little bit on some tranquilizer weapons in this video because there is a hunting mechanic, which you guys will see in just a little bit. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's about, uh, that's about it for, for just recap and coverage. So we're going to jump in. We are leaving the Fortuna, which is the, the hub, which we will uh, be heading out of in order to get into the open world right now so we can check out this beautiful stunning magnificent uh gorgeous what anyways i'm running out of descriptives uh this open world which i think is incredible now i'm going to throw this out there now that i mentioned this and a lot of people have agreed with me at tenocon is i'm getting huge destiny vibes out of this open world and just look just look at how amazing and gorgeous this world looks it's just i highly suggest jumping in especially if you have you know uh you know a, a good good monitor or whatever um you might be able to go over to play warframe and i don't know how high excuse me how high their resolution is um, I don't know if they output this video in 4K. If they did, oh my god, I need to check it. Anyways, um, so there you have it. This is uh, this is the outside, right outside. So we saw, I think it was Danielle uh, who took off and is going to do her own thing. Megan is going to follow us over this direction. And as you can see here, we have three players currently running in this open world together and i just spoiler alert we are not going to have any crashes during this whole whole area which is really really good to hear and, and good to know so uh it looks like this is this is holding up pretty well so rebecca is heading off in this direction up around this road this trail and there is an enemy base uh, and uh, we've been we've been hired to go out here through the bounty system, hired to go over here and take care of these guys, and uh, retrieve this base for you know for uh, the Solaris United. But Nef Anyo doesn't want us to do that. Obviously, he wants this base for himself. So we're gonna go over here. We're gonna fight off some Corpus. Very interesting. Uh, with with a friend, with our friends. Look at the ships. Look at the ships flying in, all this stuff. So expect there to be, you know, Corpus ships. You can see these flying Corpus units. Um, so expect more units, more good stuff. And those units are going to include, like you saw when we first left Venus, 
the giant spider proxies. Well, the, the spider proxies. There's a giant spider proxy. There's smaller spider proxies. There's little itty bitty spider proxies. But you can expect all of that stuff to be out here in the open world to some degree. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of the corpus units are within these bases, kind of doing their thing. There's probably going to be some patrols out there. But I've also noticed that we bump into these spider proxies uh, throughout the map. So I'm, I'm curious as to the lore and all that behind uh, everything that's going on here. Because if you think about it, all of these corpus are at work working on something uh, or some things. Possibly the spider proxies are currently being built and that's what the corpus are doing. You will see uh, here in just a little while there is something else they are building which uh, is pretty interesting. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see that later, but it seems like the corpus are absolutely hard at work on this planet. Um, one thing I do want to point out, and I hate to point it out, but I have noticed that uh, I don't think they chose the best weapons to show off in this video. Um, I'm just going to throw up here, as you saw the bounty, uh, when the bounty was completed, we got to see... A batch of weapons I talked about these in the last episode uh, or the last you know the small reveals video however I'm gonna throw that picture up right here I'm gonna throw that picture up right now uh, so you guys can take a look at the three weapons uh, which are rewards through this bounty system but you can see these three weapons a little bit more in detail right now just 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 so you guys can see these up close which are pretty interesting so we'll be getting these out of the bounties and uh, I'm excited to see what these what these have to offer. But anyways, here we go. Mag is going to head out. And how are they going to go about travel? Yeah. Check this out. Look at freaking hoverboards, dude. Dude, this is awesome. I love this. <laughs> A couple people were making jokes. Skate 4? Skate 4? Warframe is going to be Skate 4? I was like... No. Okay, I love I love skate. By the way, I am I love I'm a big skate fan. I think it's pretty dope. But dude, this is this is part of where my Destiny vibes came in. I was like, instead of like speeder bike deals, um, we got these awesome hoverboards, and I absolutely I absolutely love it. I think this is really cool. I just want to throw this out there. I hate Destiny, so you know, this is why I get uh, with the fact that I get Destiny vibes, is a good thing because I don't want to play Destiny because. They suck at making games uh, over there. At, uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm just. I mean, come on, guys. Destiny was was not good. It was not good. Warframe seems like they are taking everything that other companies are doing wrong, and they or everything that other companies are doing right, and putting it in a game and avoiding everything those companies are doing wrong. Because I feel like this, so this way, open world. Fly around, drive around, jump around, shoot, you know, mission task stuff is really, really cool, really interesting. And I'm so glad Warframe is, is bringing it to the game. You, you may have seen earlier uh, that after we destroyed that base uh, with the bounty, we had a, a new NPC there which gave us missions. So it's like we captured that base at least temporarily. So we could continue to uh, to do some stuff. I don't know if that base is going to be recaptured uh, when we head back or whatever. But that's very interesting. That's a cool mechanic that I would love to see more of. I would love to see actually procuring bases and holding down strongholds and stuff like that in the game. I think that'd be super fun. But anyways, this is the point where I was saying we would be doing some hunting. Now, uh, I'm going to show you guys real quick there the the uh the, the picture which includes the tranquilizer guns for this whole new hunting system um which are here I'll, i won't dwell on this too long because i talked about it in the last video the small revealed video video and uh these are going to be used to tranquilize these uh these things we go out and hunt which is very interesting we don't find out anything about this picture right here, which are, uh, looks like some sort of spears or like herding staffs or something. Uh, we don't see anything about those, so I can't really, you know, say too much about those just yet. But coming back to the gameplay, Meg has gotten out her tranquilizer, and she is going to look around and try to find this animal she's hunting. Uh, so she gives a little bit of a look around, uh, scanning around, and here we go. Sure enough. We have spotted 
this little animal right here. So this is a, a fuzzy little little dude. Uh, it's not robotic, so I'm wondering if we're going to see some robotic corpus-like things that we're going to come after. But here we go. Call for collection. Very much like Metal Gear Solid, where you Fulton extract these uh, these animals. And look at how cute this little guy is. A white-breasted Vermink. Vermink is a male. He's uh, 30.8 kilograms, and it gives his age. He's two years old and one month. That's awesome. That's adorable. I'm. I cannot wait. I think that's super cool. Um, I. I want to do some hunting. I mean, everyone was super excited about doing fishing. I was too. But I want to do some hunting. Guys, look at. Oh, look at that in the background too. Orkin. Dude, this world, man. And you can you can explore it. You can truly explore it. You see later. Oh yeah, yeah. There's also the the little bit of tricks you can do on this hoverboard. It's pretty cool. You'll see it. You see her do it again up here. But this world, look at like you can traverse this world. It's not gonna like like block you off from climbing a hill that's too steep. Like there's ways around that. Um, obviously, it's not an endless world. You know, there's gonna be barriers at some point somewhere to keep you from going too far. But it's it's crazy. Uh, I remember Steve said this world was, I, I want to say it's like, I want to say it's as much as seven times larger than the planes, but I can't say that for sure. Um, I've heard four. I've heard someone say four, but that's not confirmed and denied. I feel like way back when they first showed this off, it was originally seven times the size of Planes of Eidolon. But like I said, no confirmation, so we don't know. But... Steve did say, he said that Planes of Eidolon fits in that section we uh, we walked out of. Uh, you know how we, we came out of the elevator at the very beginning of the video? If you want, you could, uh, you could go back at some point and check that out. But that large open section with the, uh, the ventilation thing on it, he said that that area, that basin, he said, will f pretty much fits. The planes of Eidolon in it so this is much larger this is significantly larger than the planes of Eidolon which is interesting this does seem less flat which is very interesting it seems like it guides you a little bit more than the planes does uh, and I think that's cool I definitely wanted to see more height in the open worlds and uh, sure enough there is absolutely height in this open world but here's what I was talking about. Here is this giant Nef Anyo sculpture. We saw his head just a little while ago. There's a giant Nef Anyo sculpture, and you see these spider proxies crawling out of it. Now they look small. They look small in that in that cinematic, but you're gonna see them here in just a second. And they're not small. They're not small. They're they're you know they're like twice the size of a Zanuka. You know they're pretty hefty. And do you see, oh, I didn't expect this, but the freaking bubbles on their back burst, and it's like, uh, 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 I want to, like, throw up, but oh, I just, I was not expecting that. A lot of people were not expecting that, and it was just, you could, you, you could hear people when they saw that go, like, oh, God, and that's great. <laughs> great job, DE. You definitely caught me off guard with that, and I, I love it. I love it. Um, but here we go. Once again, kind of like I was saying, I was kind of surprised by the weapon choice here. Um, but you know what? It is what it is. It seemed like Rebecca spent most of her time with her secondaries, and uh, she threw her glaive around quite a bit. But um, anyways, look. Look what we see off in the distance. This massive, massive spider proxy, which is looking absolutely awesome. I'm curious of what she just picked up. Um, maybe that was just the objective, but there you go again. Bounty completed. She received uh, her reward. So it also goes to show that just like on the Plains of Eidolon, when they changed it, you will get a reward for each section of the bounty you complete. So look at this thing. This thing is massive. Absolutely massive. Uh, I heard that it was based on Steve. He put out on Twitter. He showed a picture of this thing fighting an Eidolon. And this thing is, in terms of just height, like almost twice the size of an Eidolon, which is awesome. And obviously it is much larger in terms of, uh, you know, overall size, which is super cool. But they're not going to fight that. They're not going to spoil that for us. But 
here we are. You can see that, uh, you know, Rebecca is traversing pretty, pretty easily uh, up into the world. So for the most part, you can see that this world will not, it'll, it'll try to guide you, but it won't force you 100% to uh to stay down in the low road you can climb you can do all that stuff look at and just look out in the horizon look at everything you can see and and potential stuff we can interact with um i'm i'm super curious as to how much of this world we can actually touch and interact with but you can see way over there off to the right i think that's where we took that base i think that's where we took that base so there's so much to be explored i cannot wait to explore this and do this but that's uh that's fortuna that's that's venus this is the the open world aspect now we sit here on the screen for just uh just a few moments and it's really cool but then we get interrupted which i knew was coming i knew it was coming i mean i was right about every 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 detail uh well i don't want to say every detail but i was right about the reveals uh, if you guys already have heard my speculation um you know what's basically about to happen but we're getting we're getting bombarded from space by from something. But sure enough, a ship, a ship flies in, and comes after us. What the heck is this all about? What is this about? So, this ship is basically coming to pick us up. This ugh, guys, guys, guys. We are doing space exploration now remember when i said destiny now this is where it goes from destiny open world destiny like you know uh i mean quote unquote open world uh destiny i'm sorry but you're not open world you're more like open area um this i mean technically this is kind of open area too because this this world you can't travel you know like 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 you can world of warcraft or final fantasies or whatever anyways but it's i mean it's getting bigger every iteration every open world and all that stuff is getting bigger so one day we might get to that point they may revisit planes of eidolon and expand it or you know that would be cool i'm down for that that's you know, obviously not confirmed but i think that would be neat but here we are on a ship together with our friends and we can launch off the ship we can we can fly the ship on out of here with our friends which is super cool ah guys like i said space exploration i told you steve was working on this a long time ago he went quiet and at first i was like ah they're probably just super busy and then i thought about it more and more and more i was like what could be the big reveal at this tenocon and i was like Oh, if Steve completely went radio silent because they knew they were going, like they were, they, they, he, you know, pitched the idea and everyone said, yes, yes, let's do it. And then he had to be quiet. You know what I mean? Like, this is the biggest, you know, this is like the biggest jump since the Plains of Eidolon, you know? So I'm, I'm super excited for this. I can't, I just... I want it. I want it right now. I want it in my hands. I want to be playing it right now. But we're just going to have to wait. We don't know how long. Uh, it did say it's coming in 2018, but I've heard <laughs> I've heard those kind of promises before. And that's not any shade. There's no shade thrown at DE because I get it. I get it. They are busy and they deliver. I'm telling you guys, these guys deliver. They have made... You know, they made the Planes of Eidolon, which is, uh, you know, they, they started with instance-based missions. Then they made the Planes of Eidolon and, and made this open-world awesome aspect, and they added all this stuff, and they promised things like solar rails are coming back. And even Steve kind of brings that up. He's like, he's like this is kind of a lead into solar rails and uh, all, or, uh, like, what is it? Um... The, the dark sector type thing there's a possibility that our, our Tenno can jump in these ships and travel and and maybe compete and control these sections of space and dark sectors or whatever this is where it goes from destiny for me to like Eve online or uh, what everybody wanted 
uh, what's that stupid game called that everybody thought was going to be amazing? A billion planets? Six billion planets or whatever the hell they said you could fly to and you couldn't? Anyways, this feels like, like I said, Warframe said, okay, that was an ambitious move, but they failed. But what did they do right? And then they said, let's let's see what we can do about making stuff like that in our game. And then sure enough, here we are, flying ships. Flying ships. We have passengers that can jump on their own gun turrets on these ships and provide support. We can fly, guys, through space. We are, uh, we are hovering over Venus right now, blowing up ships. We are blowing up ships. Uh, spoiler, not so much spoiler. Someone's about to get out of the ship in here in just a moment and jump into Arkwing. They're going to jump into Arkwing. They're going to leave the ship in Arkwing. And they could very easily start battling some of these ships in Arkwing. I'm, you know, because they, they have the chance to fire and go and fire at these ships and all that stuff. I'm going to skip ahead here because this is, you know, the ship moves slow. That's one thing. Please, DE. Um, I, I, I don't want the sh ship to move so slow. Um, I don't want the open world to, especially if, if we get to fly a lot more than this, I don't want the open space idea to be um, slow and gradual. I want some, in you know, uh, quick quickness, fast travels or something. Um, please, I'm sure that's that's going to be the case, but this portion of the of the reveal of the live um, felt like it was, you know, it, it took a while to get there. Um, this is where the corpus, uh, jump into the ship and, you know, start ra or like boarding the ship and they attack the ship and you have to actually put out the fires. You get to put out the fires on your ship, which is pretty cool. Um, the, 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 the advantages will obviously be to people who, uh, you know, fly with their friends, you know, fly with people aboard the ship to, to shoot other, other ships down as well as, uh, you know, provide support. Um, you can see here that Rebecca is using consumables to repair the ship, which is pretty important. Um, I'm going to skip ahead once again because it does take a little while to get up to this ship. And you're going to see here in just a second. Come on, I know we're skipping just by a few seconds, but here we go. Danielle, no, Re Megan? Is that Megan? Yeah, Megan jumping in to Arcwing. Like I said, jumping into Arcwing could potentially just start having at it, blasting at these ships, but she ends up boarding the ship. Boarding the ship to raid it for supplies, destroy it, basically. They're, they're coming in to basically blow this thing out of the sky, but here she comes, blasting away at some enemies, taking them out, and you're going to see here in just a moment, she's going to come through this door, and there's going to be a shield. She's not going to be able to get through without the help of of uh, Rebecca back on the ship, so she's gonna get a get in her command console. She's going to hack this uh, this shield deal, and she's going to to uh, 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 turn the shields off. Uh, I think they had even hacked the turret as well, but she's set it up so that she can get through. I think she hacks the turrets in the next room so that uh, it's not as difficult to get through here. So very cooperative, uh, much more raid like. Um, hopefully raids come back in some way, shape, or form when it comes to, um, you know, when it comes to the game. I would love to see that type of content still stick around. Um, you, you do notice over on the right-hand side, I don't know if that's just because, uh, they're running three computers probably, you know, on a, I mean, it's a development build, so they're running a few computers together. Uh, on this and you can see there's a little hiccups here or there like I said it never crashes which is good to see but anyways it is a work in progress so just keep that in mind but they take out the the generators inside of the ship they're destroying them uh, Steve mentions that outside you could potentially see like if you look outside uh, everything is actually happening if she wanted to look outside and see uh, Rebecca flying around and shooting ships she could actually see it you could actually see it, which is super interesting. But there you have it. Got all the all the stuff set up, ready to go. She's ready to bail on the ship. And outside you will find Rebecca coming back here 
setting all of the energy in the ships focused on the weaponry and then she's going to actually jump down to the main cannons and actually blast this ship with this high-powered cannon to destroy it. Now, personally, kind of like I was saying earlier, I want to see a little bit more difficulty. I want to see some challenge with these with these types of things, um, some significant challenge. Um, I want them to feel more like raids. I want there to be more objectives. So, for instance, I think the people in the ship should have more than one objective. I think that the person that's flying the ship should maybe have to take more than one shot at the ship in order to destroy it. Uh, it is possible this was just a very quick demonstration for Tenokan, and this will get more advanced in the future. But, uh, like I said, I do want this to be more difficult. I don't want this to be as, as simple as that was, that was right there. Um, some of you might disagree. Let me know. I'm very curious. Um, I feel like some of the other uh, content creators, at least, that I talked to at Tenokan mentioned that they do want it to feel a little bit more raid-like. They want it to be difficult. Um, and here it is, everybody celebrating. Very cool. Um, we got, you know, just, 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 it, it was a success. And everyone is super excited, especially because it didn't crash. All that good stuff. A little bit of celebration going on here. Super cool. Um, speaking of, I just I'll, I just want to take this time to say, because uh, this is a little bit drawn out, I've met all these guys, everybody that's up there on the stage, as well as a lot of the other devs. These are phenomenal people. These people are... Uh, they're my they're my friends you know they're they they're you know i say that and I, that's not saying that is like i'm trying to protect them i'm saying that because they have been nothing but welcoming and nice and and friendly to me and steve steve is just uh he's he's dead anyways um i've personally gotten uh you know i pictures with a few of these guys um, I've, I've got a signature from Steve because I, I mean, I had to, I mean, I had to, um, but they're all wonderful people. Um, I want to say, I, I've even said it to them, to them before, but I just want to reiterate that I am doing what I'm doing and I am where I'm at today because of them. Um, I know they thank us as a community and, uh, that's absolutely true. <laughs> Ultimately, we, they couldn't be doing what they're doing without, without the community but at the same time i could not be doing what i'm doing without them i also could not be uh doing what i'm doing without you guys so thank you so much thank you thank you thank you truly from the bottom of my heart thank you so much uh i do this and i enjoy it um i get to go to tenokan and have opportunities like this because of you guys and i'm gonna keep at it because i love what i'm doing and i know you guys enjoy the content as well um I'm just thumbing through here because, of course, that can't be it. They have to do something. They have to do something at the very end in order to uh, kind of leave us leave us on a, on a cliffhanger. Um, come on. Lights go out. Here we go. Beautiful. But once again, thank you, DE. Thank you so much. But here we go. We're going to get into it. Uh, I'm going to be quiet for this reveal because there is some audio that is very important. Right now, I just want to say, if you have not beaten, played through the sacrifice, there is a potential major spoiler coming up. So it is up to you if you want to proceed further. Um, it's a big deal. So.
There it is. That's pretty much everything. The the old war has now become the new war. That sets us up for the next set of quests, which is insane. Uh, the dialogue there that has the Lotus talking to Mother, she says Mother, um, was very, very, very interesting. Um, Hun Hao, I mean, Hun Hao is, uh, I don't who knows where Hun Hao is at this moment in time, but now that Lotus is gone off, defected, uh, whatever, she is now in the Tao system, you can see that she's amassing an army, uh, or at least the sentients are amassing an army. Sounds like Lotus is, is taking orders from someone she refers to as Mother. So that's crazy. A very quick speculation is in the last Tenokan we saw a massive ships and all sorts of giant outposts type stuff that could literally consume other you know, other ships or planets, even uh, moons, whatever, and, and dismantle them and consume them to, in order to build themselves, the sentient race. So I would not be surprised if there is this hive mind mentality, which they've kind of mentioned in the past, that is going on. And Lotus is just part of this hive mind. So Mother is telling her what she needs to do and how she needs to do it. And everything is just working like a colony of bees or whatever, a hive. So, who knows? But all we know is the new war. So the this is this is about to get serious. Maybe sentient, you know, uh, we're, we're going to see sentience uh, on the regular basis as a faction destroying stuff, things going crazy. Who knows at this point? But that is it. This was the the big reveal video, and. I am so excited for the future. I hope you guys are too. Thank you so much for watching. I think I'm going to leave it there. There's all the all the crazy stuff, all the craziness when it comes to Warframe content. If you would like to see more, uh, you can obviously jump down and follow the channel for more Warframe content when it comes to updates, Tenocon, just regular fun gameplay, Tenogen, Fashion Frame, all that wonderful stuff. You can do so. If you would like to, you can also join the channel and check out some other content for some other games. But Warframe, with the way it is going, is going to continue to maintain the spotlight and the, uh, the priority on this channel. So we're just going to keep it there, guys. Thank you so much. Truly, from the bottom of my heart, I couldn't have gone to TennoCon without you guys. I could not make these videos. You know, uh, without you guys, I'd be waiting for for the, the reveals after everybody else knows about them before I can make these videos. Um, but thankfully, I can do it because of you guys. And uh, like I said, to DE, to you guys, to uh, my patrons, um, just thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. I love, I love this. I love you guys for, for providing me with this opportunity. And uh, I, I love doing what I'm doing. So with that said, I hope to see you guys again very soon. Until next time. Blah!